In this video, we are going to learn how to solve absolute value equations. We're going to start with a simple example. The absolute value of x is equal to 5. Since the operation of absolute value makes any number positive, there are two possible solutions for x. It can either be 5 or negative 5. And just to check that this like assumption is correct, we can plug in 5 into the absolute value and see that that is equal to 5. That is correct. And we can also plug in the negative 5 into the absolute value and see that we also get a positive 5, which is also correct, meaning the two solutions are x equals 5 and x equals negative 5. Now let's look at a slightly more in-depth uh, question. The absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. Now, the logic behind this equation is very similar to the previous example. There are now two possible solutions, not just for x, but for 2x minus 1. And we know that 2x minus 1 could equal 5, or 2x minus 1 could equal negative 5. Now we have two equations we can go through and solve for x. First by adding 1 and then dividing by 2. And when we're finished we'll see that we have x equals 3 as a solution and x equals negative 2. Now we should go ahead and check these solutions by plugging them into the original equation. Now it's very important you plug into the original equation because uh, we did modify our equation that first step when we split it into two for those two possible solutions. So since we modified it, we shouldn't use one of the modified equations. We should use the original equation we started with. We'll see here after plugging in 3 that the answer is correct. That is a true statement. And after we plug in negative 2, we will get a negative 5 on the inside of the absolute value symbols. But since we are taking the absolute value, that does end up being a true statement as well, meaning that both of those are solutions. Now let's look into a slightly more multi-step equation. We'll see here that we don't have an absolute value equation by itself like we saw in the previous two examples. So what we'll need to do is first get the absolute value expression by itself. We'll add 1 and then we'll divide by 3. Just like a normal equation. we'll end up with absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 3. Now that we have the absolute value expression by itself, we'll see here that there are now two possible solutions for x plus 2. Those two possible solutions would be x plus 2 is equal to 3, and x plus 2 is equal to negative 3. Solving both of those all the way through, we get x is equal to 1, and x is equal to negative 5. Now again, we did modify our equation at that step right there when we split it in two. So we must check these solutions by plugging it into the original expression. Now this step may take a little bit of time, and that's OK. It's better to know that you're correct did not know that you're correct. You'll see here that even though I know it just remains 3, I still take, took the operation of the absolute value into mind. And when I finish, I'll see that this is a correct statement. So I know that x equals 1 is a solution. And as I go through the other example, I'll get negative 3 on the inside of the absolute value, 
which when I take the absolute value of it does end up being positive 3. which will also end up being a true statement. So our two solutions would be x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 5. Now the last example was written to have a variable both inside the absolute value and outside the absolute value. Which means now when I go to split this up there are two possible solutions for 3x plus 2. But you may be wondering, how do I do the positive and negative like I did earlier with this 3, like with plus and minus 3, and with plus and minus 5, like in the previous two examples? Well, it is quite simple. We'll still put 3x plus 2, and it's going to equal a positive 4x plus 5, and 3x plus 2 will equal a negative 4x plus 5. So you treat the 4x plus 5 as a whole and look at both the positive and negative solution of it. We'll solve the first equation, which since it does remain positive, there is no change to 4x plus 5. But as we go and solve the equation, after subtracting 3x from both sides, we'll have 2 is equal to x plus 5. Subtracting 5, we'll get negative 3 is equal to x, which is the same as saying x is equal to negative 3. Now with the Second equation we have for the negative of 4x plus 5, we have to distribute that negative, giving us 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 4x minus 5. That is an x there. <laughs> and then we'll add 4x to both sides, giving us 7x plus 2 is equal to negative 5. 7x is equal to negative 1, oh, negative 7. <laughs> when I subtract 2, which when I divide by 7 gives me negative 1. So our two possible solutions are x equal to negative 3 and x equal to negative 1, which we will still continue to check to make sure they are correct, because we did modify our equation in that first step. When I plug in negative 3, I get three absolute value of 3 times negative 3 plus 2 is equal to 4 times negative 3 plus 5. So we get negative 9 plus 2 which is inside those absolute value bars, is equal to negative 12 plus 5. Now you'll see here how the absolute value of negative 7 is equal to negative 7 itself, which we're about to see a conflict, because when I take the absolute value of negative 7, that'll be a positive 7, but that will not equal a negative 7, meaning that this x equals negative 3 is not a solution of the original equation. We refer to that as an extraneous solution. which by definition is a solution derived from an original equation that is not a solution of the original equation. So even though we derived it from this equation, it's not actually a solution. That's what makes it extraneous. Keyword, extra. Now when we check the other solution, we'll have the absolute value of 3 times negative 1 plus 2 is equal to 4 times negative 1 plus 5 as I go through and check this, you'll notice that the inside of the absolute value will end up being negative 1, and the outside will end up being positive 1, which is exactly what we want. Because when I take the absolute value of negative 1, it will be 1, making that a correct solution. So, as a quick recap, when we're solving absolute value equations, there's always a step when we go from an absolute value, and we split into two possible answers, the positive and negative of what it's equal to. Now an important part of this solving process is that you do need the absolute value by itself before you can split.